friends, Heidi here from Rain Country. God is good all the time. Well, I'm sitting out here on my deck and it's a partially cloudy day. So right now the clouds are somewhat obscuring the sun. So the sun comes out and I start squinting. Uh, well, that's what's going on. <laughs> but I figured it would be a great place to sit and talk about uh, sun protection, natural sun protection. Do you need it? How much do you need? And what are some options for you? Now, the first thing I want to do is talk about a little from my own experiences when it comes to sunscreen. Now, please keep in mind that I am not a licensed nutritionist. I'm not a licensed herbalist. So I just want to preface it on that so people don't think that, you know, I, I'm not trying to claim to be anything that I'm not. So again, most of my experiences, like how we got off our thyroid and the things that I share with you are based on what we have done for our own health and also what I've studied and learned along the way. Um, it doesn't always mean that everything is going to be, that I say is gonna be right for you. So you have to do your own research and find those things that are gonna work for you. But I always hope that I can at least give you a starting point of how to look things up and where to look things up and to find those things and realize what you should be avoiding. Now, when it comes to protecting your skin from the sun, the one thing I can definitely say is that you should be avoiding store-bought sunscreens unless you know they're all natural because typical store-bought sunscreens are full of all kinds of toxins that are then getting absorbed into your skin and into your bloodstream. So you shouldn't be putting anything on your skin that you would not eat. Now I said I was gonna start with my own personal experiences when it comes to sunscreen. So a little history, I grew up, even though I've lived in Washington all my life, I grew up on the side of the state where summers are very hot, very dry, it never rains, uh, at least in the summertime, and if we do get any rain, it's just a little bit in the spring, that's about it. And so I spent most of my summers, all summer long, running barefoot in shorts and tank tops, around outside getting full exposure to sun all day long and I never once got a sunburn during that time. Then years later I moved to the opposite side of the mountains and in the darkest and wettest place of Washington State and I found that in the summertime when that when we'd finally get some sun I'd run out there and uh, I would burn and so I started wearing sunscreen and I know part of that was because I wasn't as exposed to the sun and so as I was when I was a kid. And so my skin needed more time to be able to catch up. But also when I started wearing sunscreen, I started having more issues with my skin and with getting burned. And so years later yet again, I start learning more about proper health and nutrition. Now I've always studied health and nutrition since, uh, well, at least since I was in my teens, in my, you know, still in high school, I found it very important. And yet finding the right sources and the right resources, rather than just listening to what mainstream was telling me, uh, that wasn't something that came till many years later. And, you know, after my kids were mostly grown and all that. So I started learning more about proper skin care and sun care and learned that uh, how bad that those store-bought sunscreens were for us. And so I just stopped using them. Well, the interesting thing there is I actually stopped getting sunburns when I stopped using the sunscreen. And even in the early part of, you know, the spring and summer when we finally start getting a little bit of sun and I get out there and I just try to limit my exposure at the beginning just get a little bit at a time a little bit at a time rather than going out there and and trying to sunbathe first thing out of the winter that that was my mistake before when I wasn't using sunscreen and then the other thing that went along with that was learning how a proper diet will protect your skin from the inside out. And that's the main thing I wanna focus on today. And one of the things is understanding that proper nutrition 
helps your body do what it was made to do. That includes protecting your skin from the sun and protecting it from getting skin cancer, protecting it from burning. That, that nutrition from the inside out is what's going to make the biggest difference in your skin health. And I mean, the same goes true for your thyroid health, for pretty much anything you can think of. It's just getting a proper diet, getting your nutrients through whole foods. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to read off to you some foods that are high in all the different nutrients from vitamin C, E, omega-3s, and, and lycopenes, and different things like that, that you should be making sure you're getting plenty of during the summer months to help protect your skin. And the great thing about these things is they're mostly available fresh during the hottest part of the summer when you're getting most exposed to the sun. So let me go ahead and read these things to you. Citrus fruits, all kinds, carrots, strawberries, green tea, pomegranates, red grapes, leafy greens, kale and your spinach, your chard, tomatoes, watermelon, turmeric and flax seed. All of these things, I mean, there's many, many more, but these are the things that are at the top of the list that you, you really should look into. Try to get more into your diet. If you're not already growing your own, make sure you're getting as organic and natural as possible, like such as the carrots. Don't buy the baby carrots. Even if they say organic, uh, maybe they were raised organically, but the treating what they do to them to make them baby carrots and ke it's, they're chemically peeled. And so now they're no longer organic. So I, when I buy carrots at the store, organic carrots, I look for anything that is unpeeled, specifically if it has the green tops on it still because there's so many good nutrients in those greens that you can dehydrate up and, and use in your different meals. And I've done that many times. And I don't peel my carrots, I simply wash them because I think there's a lot of good nutrients on the peel. So take all these things into consideration. Think about, this is the problem with sitting outside trying to shoot a video is the chickens always like to interrupt, whether it be they want attention or they're just laying an egg and they want to announce it to the world. So. So anyway, find more ways to get these foods into your diet and look into other foods. I would venture to guess that pretty much anything, any green that you're gonna grow in your garden, including dandelion greens and grape leaves and strawberry leaves, are gonna do a lot to help your skin from the inside out. Um, a lot of these things help not just by boosting the body's ability to protect itself, but also by preventing and fighting possible skin cancers down the road. Hmm, chickens. Hey! Okay, so now let's move on to some things that you can use topically, some natural things that you can use to protect your skin. And these things are raspberry seed oil. And here I'm also going to list the SPF of these. Raspberry seed oil has an SPF of 25 to 50, which is I puts it pretty much at the top of the list. The second one would be carrot seed oil at 35 to 40 SPF. Then you also have a wheat germ oil at 20. Coconut oil and shea butter are about the same at four to six or four to eight SPF. Almond oil is five. So those are just a few. There's many more other ones out there. You could also look at using a, a zinc oxide. Uh, there are some things I would, I mean, especially I would say this if you're really, really fair, I think you should be the only ones using that and using it only where you need it just because there can be some reactions to it. I would say stick more to the to these oils. Now, I use, all I ever use is my own homemade skin cream. I have a recipe to that and a video that I will link to up here. You can also find it on my Etsy store. That is all I ever use on my skin. Um, I never burn, uh, no matter how much time I spend in the sun anymore, it seems like I never burn. Even though I do try to carefully just do a few minutes at a time in the sun, but even uh, working in the hottest part of the day or the mid-sun, I still have not got a burn. Um, but if you're very fair, you may still need to take 
um, some other precautions if you are if you easily burn and that is wearing wide brimmed hats um, I saw Julie over at Dirt Patch Heaven had a beautiful wide brimmed hat you can easily crochet your own I've I've made a few myself. I just don't wear hats much except for the occasional straw cowboy hat that I have. I wear it once in a while, especially on super sunny days when I need to work outside. That's mostly just to keep the sun out of my eyes so I can see what I'm doing. And that's another thing as far as eye health. Your eyes need to get a little bit of sun on them. I'm not talking about staring at the sun, especially at midday. That's very damaging. But the way I'm sitting here, I've got sun hitting me from the side. It's actually hitting my eyes. I'm getting... Okay, I hear you. Shush. Anyway, the sun is hitting my eyes and I'm getting that enough exposure that is actually going to increase my eyes ability to protect themselves from the sun, just like with the skin. And it's going to also help your eyesight. Uh, I used to wear sunglasses all the time, anytime I was, even on cloudy days because the sun might seem like my eyes were so sensitive to the sun. Well, I did the same thing with sunglasses as I did with the sunscreen. I threw it all, I threw them all out because I realized the reason my eyes, just like my skin, were so sensitive to the sun were because I was never allowing them to be exposed to the sun. And that brings me to my next point, and that is you really, especially if you're darker skinned or you live in a place like I do that gets very little sun, Sun is very important to your overall health. You need to get that sun. Just like you need to get your hands and your feet in the dirt and in the grass. These are, these are so good for you. And we've been taught to be heliophobic. We've been taught to be afraid of the sun. Oh, the sun causes cancer. Well, I believe that maybe the sun causes skin cancer because of improper diets, improper nutrition and putting a bunch of toxins on your skin is gonna be more apt to cause cancer and other illnesses than eating right and then just letting yourself get a little bit of sun. Uh, now, depending on how fair you are, if you're darker, uh, get as much, you need to get as much sun as you can to get that vitamin D. If you're more fair, you really only need a little bit. And I recommend for protection, besides the wide brimmed hat, also going with lightweight, long sleeve shirts, long, you know, if you're a lady, long skirts, believe it or not, are far more comfortable and cool in the summertime and easy to move around in than wearing shorts. I used to wear shorts all the time outside and I have found that skirts, long skirts that keep my legs shaded but allow uh, freedom of movement and airflow are far more comfortable and cool in the summertime and your legs stay protected from the sun and there's no fear of sunburn there. So anyway, look into some different things. There's lots of lightweight type shirts, you know, chiffon type fabric where you can be somewhat protected from the sun um, but not get too warm either. It's, you know, you think about people in other countries that get a lot of sun, they tend to wear long sleeves and long pants more than they do shorts and sleeveless tops because they know better they're more protected from the sun that way loose clothes and that cover your skin if if you're needing that protection from the sun that is uh, but otherwise at least get try to do the best you can to get a little sun on your face and a little sun on your hands that could possibly be all you need to get your vitamin d um, for me, again, here, because we don't get that much sun, I try to get a, out in the sun as much, much as possible. And at the very hottest part of the day is when I, I'll go back inside and do my sewing. But that is also why I move my treadle machine out right in front of the sliding glass door, because in the morning, the sunlight is coming through there. And that's some of the best sun to get, especially on your eyes, is the, is the uh, evening and early morning sun. And then I can sit there and get that sun through the window and get it exposed to a lot as much as possible and uh, still get some chores done while I'm inside. All right, well, I hope this helps. And I hope I remembered everything I meant to say. It seems like there's always something, even when I write down notes, there's always something that I mean to say that I leave out. But don't be afraid to ask some questions below and maybe you'll remind me of some other things that I forgot and left out. And again, I hope you find this helpful. 
and just a way to help get yourself to be more healthy and more natural and just take better care of yourself all the way around. Hope you enjoyed this video and that you learned something new. Thanks for watching. Take care and God bless.